Hello, it is Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday crossword today, which means we're going to be solving a midweek, mid-difficulty themed crossword. And uh, this midweek, mid-difficulty themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Noah Bizanson, Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and of course, as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they help directly support this channel, bring us this series. I'm very grateful to them for that, uh, as I am grateful to all of the patrons of the campaign at any level for any length of time. So thank you if you contribute. And if you'd like to do so, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There you can find the bonus videos available to patrons as well as for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses mug. Um, thanks again to all of the patrons. And also thanks if you've subscribed to the channel on YouTube. That is also a big help, as is commenting on the videos, liking them, and interacting with the channel in any way. Those things are all helpful, so thank you. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server you can, of course, join. It's a nice, friendly chat community, and there's a link in the description field, so do consider that. All right, let's get on to the crossword. This is the second New York Times puzzle by Jared Goodsmith, so welcome back to him. Uh, for his sophomore effort, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's uh, let's start solving, see how we get on today. Teacher of the Talmud, that would be a rabbi, so a teacher of, of, uh, of Jewish theology, for instance. Uh, broccoli blank, broccoli rob is a, I think not actually a broccoli, but, uh, but called such in... Uh, in uh, at least at least American English. I don't remember what broccoli rob is called elsewhere, but there we go. A horn or whistle at times could be an alert, could alert you to something uh, dangerous perhaps or important is happening. It's Vera Soothing. Right, okay, I don't think we've too recently seen the official medicinal plant of the New York Times crossword, but it is certainly aloe, aloe vera, um, very often marketed on you know, soothing creams and things like this. Uh, so that's our pun. It's very soothing. And uh, the, the rare exclamation point pun rather than question mark pun today. Was worth another mention. If something was worth another mention, it bore repeating? No. Uh, bore re-saying? No, it doesn't. I really thought that would be something like that. I, Bohr is almost certainly right. Let's look at the crosses. Mischievous tyke could be, oh, I would say an imp. Maybe this isn't alert. Oh, an alarm. Right. Horn or whistle at times, an alarm. Same idea. There we go. Okay. So mischievous tyke is indeed an imp. I don't know what was worth another mention. Or, hmm. Here we have start of a simple selection process. So the children's uh, selection rhyme, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. There we go. And a rural shindig could be a barn party, maybe? I don't know if there's another more specifically accurate word for that, something like that. Edie's competitor, this is an ice cream brand. So there is an ice cream brand, Briars. And I think Dryers, are they the same and maybe different on the east and west coast of the United States, or are they unrelated? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, this will be the answer, I'm sure. Janet's not a robot boyfriend on The Good Place. Right. I have seen some of this. I don't remember this character's name. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. If I put in Barn Party, does that help with anything? Peter, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Bring up. To raise something, to bring it up. To rear, a as in a child. Um... Travel discount. Fair as in airfare something. Fair dis fair reduce. I don't know. International Intelligence Organization. Right, okay, I don't think this is party. Because this is probably Mensa, which is an organization that I think admits people on the basis of, of, of IQ test performance. Bring up. Bring up could be rear as in to rear a child, to bring up a child. That could be. Customizable Nintendo avatar, right. These are called uh, Miis, which are named 
in the similar, the sort of spelled in the style of the Nintendo Wii console, which is W-I-I. Okay, Apple blank. Apple Incorporated? Apple... Ward off, to fend off um, enemies or something. So it could be in incorporated, it could be INC. Rural Shindig, Barn. I don't know why. Oh, dance, a oh, dance. Oh, that makes more sense. There we go. Barn dance. Okay, I've probably heard that phrase used in that way before. Okay, there we go. So light of a light bulb moment would be the idea that you have. And... Janet's not a robot boyfriend. Oh, Derek, it must be. I don't know what else would fit there. Uh, scraped out. If you scraped out a living, you eked out a living. For instance, you earned some money. And Eartha, who sang, I want to be evil. Eartha Kitt, great singer, Eartha Kitt. And she also uh, joined the cast of the uh, 1960s Batman series as Catwoman, I'm pretty sure, um, if I remember correctly. And anyway, as I... Every time I have an excuse to bring up that show, I do to recommend you watch it. The Adam West 1960, 1960s uh, Batman TV show is absolutely great. Very self-aware, uh, kind of winking humor. Sort of poem not usually pluralized by adding an S. Oh, haiku. I guess you could say I wrote several haiku, which you wouldn't, wouldn't pluralize in that context. Because of its sort of nature as a loan word, I suppose. Home of, although I think I've, I've heard both. Anyway. Home of Bakma Temple. Is it Hanoi? Power unit. A, a watt, a unit of power. There we go. Still able to win. If you're still in it, you're still able to win. You're still in the game. Lead into stick or starter. This is looking pretty good for Hanoi. Um, oh, non-stick or non-starter. So a non-stick pan, for instance, you know, coated with Teflon or something. And then a non-starter, an idea that just isn't going to get off the ground. Okay, so... Alternative to a thigh, oh, it, with poultry, with a chicken, for instance, so a wing of the animal. And then escape of a sort could be, oh, what about this? Oh, it, it is bore repeating, but we are, I guess maybe sort of appropriately, we're repeating the RE. We get, we're getting a sort of overlap here. Bore repeating. Ah, right. Okay. Well, good, good. So then this is fair reducals or fair reduce reduction. There we go. That's what it is. Because again, we're repeating the RE. So that's appropriate with an RE because RE often means do it, you know, it, it converts the word into something that means doing it again. Not always, but obviously, in fact, not even in this case, but, uh, but often. Anyway, uh, so there we go. That's what's going on with the theme. So something about RE. What, so what is, here's our revealer, which, uh, which as yesterday is right in the center of the grid. And it says said no, or... Interpreted differently, a hint to entering the answers to 16, 26, 46, and 61 across. Said no, refused, re... Oh, you know, it is refused. It is refused. Because re is fusing together these words. It's sort of, if you imagine, overlapping two pieces of metal and then welding them together or something like that. Um, I guess it isn't necessarily what you do, but you, you take my meaning in general. <laughs> okay. Uh, tour de force. So what is what are we looking for here? This doesn't mean tour the place in France, does it? I don't think it does. It just means plural of tour de force. Not sure what we're looking for. Tis but a scratch. I th is this is this a, a direct quote from the film Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the Black Knight scene? I can't remember if this is exactly that or just sort of generally referencing that kind of thing. I think it is, I think it is referencing that scene. Uh, I think that's what that is. Okay. With 40 across offshore work site, a rig, an oil rig, maybe? Always seems like a very lonely job. Uh, finish one's taxes to file. Uh, maybe this isn't... Oh, no, I see. Right. With Sorry, with 40 across. So it is an oil rig, but I just didn't pay close attention to the compound nature of the clue. So oil goes here. Rig goes here. There we go. So this is to file one's taxes would be to finish them off. And then if one's speaking naturally, one's fluid or fluent? Fluent is what we want. There you go. You're fluent in language. You speak it naturally. Escort of a sort could be a, a gigolo, sort of male escort. And then 
cool. Pl- I've always found that a fascinating word. Does it derive from, derive from Italian in some way, maybe? A cool place in a hot place, an oasis, maybe. So nice, refreshing location in a desert. And then letters that are fittingly part of, and it looks like family something, a uh, family unit would be the full, I see the fully spelled phrase here. Uh, oops, here, I guess I should say. And the missing letters are A-U-N-T from aunt, which is a family member. So appropriately enough, part of family unit there. Apathetic could be, if you're apathetic, you're uninterested, you're unmotivated, you're uh, at ease, it doesn't fit. What is it? I don't know. Oh, blasé, maybe? You're sort of blasé about a situation, you're apathetic about it, you're not roused to have a strong opinion or, or motivation, could be. Cousin of a picnic, and oh, right, okay, so a barbecue would be a cousin of a picnic, and then informally, because we're putting BBQ rather than spelling out barbecue, the word. Nickname for Missouri's second largest city with the. Now that I don't know. Uh, to cancel something would be to ax it, so maybe a television series or something gets axed, it gets canceled, and trap from all sides. Oh, to box in, right. Okay, to box someone in would be to trap them from all sides. And then a Dungeons and Dragons mission would be a quest zone, you know, task given in a fantasy sort of environment. And then the Lou is Missouri's second large city. Okay, so St. St. Louis, presumably. All right, there we go. It's money in a saying. Time is money, as they say. And there we go. Uh, 1800s steam-powered locomotive. Oh, iron horse is often how steam locomotives were. Uh, it's often what they're nicknamed in the 19th century. So I don't know if this refers to a particular class of locomotive or anything like that. Probably not. I don't think so. Just wondering because it specifies the century. Were they... Yeah. Eh. I suppose it's just because that was that was the sort of golden era of steam locomotives. All right. Breath freshener could be a mint. And a good egg would be a kind soul. You might call someone a good egg. Decent person. Uh, surrounded by, if you're surrounded by particular people, you're among them. Uh, get up and go could be what? Vim or zip or pep. Pep maybe. I think I like best for that as a standalone word. Let's try it and see. Tour de force. Oh, coups. Okay, right. So uh, a coup could be a tour de force, a real coup, a real tour de force, a real sort of impressive performance. Coup is one of these words that's used for about a million different phrases in French. Um, we mainly, I think, just know it in English for sort of, I guess, coup de grace and coup d'etat, and then coup in this general sense. I guess we actually use it for a few different things in English as well, but even more in French. Anyway, curses upon thee. Fi, maybe this isn't pep, maybe it is zip. Because curses upon thee, you could say, ah, curses, fi, a pox on your house. Um, so blank Klein, author of Why We're Polarized. Uh, well, I do recognize Ezra Klein as a journalist and writer, so must be the author of this book. And then here we have not inflammatory, right? Okay, so we're going to reuse this, this R-E here. Uh, it's going to fuse these words together. So what is it? Not inflammatory. Fire resistant? Yes, okay. So I was thinking inflammatory initially. I was thinking it, uh, and, and I think this is what we're meant to initially read, as inflammatory in an emotional sense. Um, but the question mark, indica- well, actually, do these all have? No, these don't all have question marks. So in this case, the question mark is just referring to a pun, and it's saying don't read inflammatory in the idiomatic sense. Read it in a punny way, which is often a more literal way. And in this case, inflammatory could be, it's, it's sort of made equivalent to inflammable. So something that could light on fire. Anyway, if it's not inflammatory in this punny, wet, punny sense, it's fire resistant. Oops, there we go. Or fire resistant. Yonder. So if something's yonder, it's over there, it's afar. And a musical instrument also called a chak chak. Oh, is it a mer... Is it a maraca? This, would that be presumably named for the... Oh my God, this is a disaster. What am I doing? There we go. That was a strangely elusive word for me to type. Uh, anyway, presumably named for the sound that it makes. 
sort of shaking kind of sound. Um, mundane employment derisively could be, oh, a Mick job is sometimes what people call that, obviously named after McDonald's. So a kind of stereotypical entry-level job would be simply working at McDonald's in some capacity. And then here we have blank KC Spanish, of course. I don't know offhand. I hope I recognize it when I see it, but I don't know if I will. Leader of Argos. So this presumably is not referring to the, <laughs> the UK-based chain of high street retailers in which you kind of order your goods from a kind of kiosk thing in the store rather than actually browse shelves. I assume that's not what it's meaning, but rather <laughs> the um, letter, the first letter of the word, you know, in the Greek alphabet. So it'd be alpha, the sort of A equivalent in the Greek alphabet. I think that's probably what that's looking for. Okay. Uh, because Argos is of, course, is, of course, Greek. Okay. Oh, maybe maybe clara kisi or something like that, because that would mean clear in the sense of being evident or obvious. I think that's probably the answer. Harshly criticized informally would be to... I don't know. Five letters, what would that be? Here we have .png alternative. So this is a, an image computer image format. So an alternative to a PNG file could be a JPEG file, JPG extension. So harshly criticized. Rap at? What a revelation. Oh ho or oh? No, this isn't obvious to me. To prohibit something could be to ban or to bar it. Rap on? Harshly criticized? Is that... Oh, I misspelled JPEG. That was ridiculous. Sorry, that didn't help me at all. Rag on. That, that's that's completely straightforward. To rag on someone is to harshly criticize them. Don't rag on me. You could say, stop stop berating me. Okay, fine. That that was easier than I thought. Uh, helps when you type the answers incorrectly. Hel having legendary... To have legendary status is... Oh, no, no, no. To be having legendary status is to be iconic. There we go. Um, as I often say, and it remains true, it can be really useful to put these into a sentence, but be sure to preserve the exact kind of part of speech and conjugation and tense and everything, um, because that will allow you to then come up with an exactly matching equivalent term. Anyway, so here we have uh, claro que si, um, Spanish, of course, good. And then sanctuary like Yellowstone. Sanctuary like Yellowstone. Well, that's a, that's a national park. National for oh, a national forest. Maybe it is. No. Uh, no, it is. A, it is a national park. Surely. Um. Not sure. Not sure. We need an R E. Oh, nature reserve. There we go. There we go. I had to think. I had to think more in the context of the actual theme. I was just thinking terms of general answers, but I should have been thinking about things that end in RE. And as soon as I did, nature came to mind. So there we go. Great. Uh, Quebecois confidant, uh, a confidant, sorry, <laughs> unintentionally kind of read that in a French sort of way. Anyway, um, Quebecois means obviously someone from Quebec who could very well be a French speaker, a speaker of um, sort of Quebecois French, which is slightly different to Standard French, but not different enough to make this answer different. So a confidant could be a friend or in French, a me. There we go. Public relations focus could be would be the one's image. You have a public relations team, I guess, or person, I guess, to manage your public image. And then something, if you say that it must happen without delay, it must happen stat as quickly as possible. To bring up something could be to cite it, to raise it as a topic or refer to it as a reference, maybe. And then something epic could be of huge scope. Um, something fake could be something that is a sham. And then you matter to me. I care, you could tell somebody. TV's Ted Lasso, e.g., is a, the coach of an English football team. Um, and Amer Well, he's specifically an American who is a coach of an English football team, which is the sort of premise of the show. And then if you have not many of something, you only have some of it. Um, I think this is all fine. Oh, we didn't look at this. Raw material for some analysts. Data, there we go. So, of course, you analyze data. Subject of a centuries-old theatrical superstition, Macbeth. Um, 
often referred to in theatrical circles as the Scottish play to avoid invoking it directly by by name, which is considered uh, it's considered a sort of cursed production, I think, in some some capacity. I remember becoming exposed to that in this really great Canadian sitcom called Slings and Arrows, which is set in a community Shakespeare company sort of theater. Uh, it's really, it's a really great show. I've tried to find it in recent years to recommend to somebody and it's almost impossible to actually find it to watch legally. It's just one of those things that's kind of a, a bit aged and has fallen out of the easily accessible, um, out of easily accessible reach, which seems to happen often with, with the older TV shows. It's not even all that old, to be honest, but anyway, Slings and Arrows is worth seeking out if you, if you happen to find access to it somehow. Here we have part of YSL, Yves Saint Laurent, which is uh, the monogram of a famous fashion designer. So uh, part of that would be Yves, the uh, first name. Eton students traditionally, so this is the uh, famous private British preparatory school um, outside of London. And uh, boys go there. It's a boys school. Okay, resting place, question mark. Seat, you rest on your seat? Not quite sure I see that yet. Oh yeah, I think it is. Because if you're needing direction, you're at sea, you're confused. Um, used metaphorically to mean generally in a state of confusion. And then here we have blank fly, RBI earning play. So I couldn't explain why it's this, an, this is an RBI earning play or even what that means, but... I at least have heard of a sacrifice fly in baseball, so a sack fly. Um, it's, it's a phrase I've heard. And that's, uh, that's enough to get me over the line here. And then a trunk in which you could store things would be a chest. And then the resting place is indeed your seat on which you sit. And uh, no, 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 no. All right, I've got to find what I've done wrong. Okay, well, let's see if I can quickly run through this and see if I just... First, when I do this, I just see, oh, oh, trap from all sides, box in. So where did my mistake come from here? Did I misspell oasis as oases, the plural? Or did I just, did I just flub box in with an E instead of an I? I don't know, but I made a mistake on one of the two and that was it. Good. My first port of call when I when the puzzle doesn't complete is I just run through and see if I can see something that's misspelled. And in this case, boxen, that's a sort of word I invented was. Uh, sometimes it's not. And it turns out that the, the error is more subtle than that, but uh, as opposed to just a blatant misspelling. But in this case, fortunately, I found it without too much trouble. All right. Sorry about that brief detour. There we go. That was the Wednesday crossword. I um, hope you enjoyed that. I did. Let's take a look at our theme. We had our centrally placed revealer, refuse centrally placed, just as just as it was yesterday, I think, and refuse, refuse together these words with the letters R E. So bore repeating, bore repeating, fair reduction, fair reduction, fire resistant, fire resistant, and finally nature reserve, nature reserve. And on, <laughs> this wasn't the point of when I did that. Uh, the point of why I read them in that sort of contracted way, but it was really interesting doing so because it, if you were speaking to somebody quickly and you simply said, oh, that bore repeating, I didn't pronounce bore repeating there. I simply said bore repeating, but it's almost indistinguishable, I think, to a native speaker speaking at, you know, an, a sort of typically fluent quick clip. And it, that really it, it indicates quite a lot um, why language changes the way it does over the course of centuries and things get sort of smashed together. That happens all the time. I mean, many sort of completely standardized modern English words are just the result of people mis slightly mishearing things or kind of slurring things together over the course of many centuries. And then it just turns out that's the language now. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting unintentional demonstration of that when I just read these and realized, ah, right, you can hear how that how things just kind of get smashed together because they're they're sort of easy they're almost easier to say that way it is a bit it is a bit awkward to say fair reduction um not not all that awkward compared to some phrases but uh but yeah you can see how these things slightly lose syllables and definition over time anyway 
That was a, that was a fun little <laughs> linguistic experiment, unintentional. And now let's read a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. So Dragon Traces points out that the Sooner State, uh, which I thought was maybe Oklahoma, but I didn't say because I wasn't sure about it. Uh, Dragon Traces confirms it is in fact Oklahoma and points out that a wall, a W-O-L, is absent without leave. He's capitalized the out, which makes me wonder if I simply said absent with leave or something. I don't know. I must have left something out. Anyway, sorry about that. But absent without leave. There we go. And let's see what else. Oh, well, George here has some more context on Sooners. It's a reference to a nickname given to the early participants in the land run of 1889, which initially opened the unassigned lands in the future state of Oklahoma to non-native settlement. Some went sooner than the authorized time and got the best land. Right. Okay. Wow. So it's a slightly dishonorable nickname. I mean, you could argue historically anyway. And uh, and there we go. I think that was all, all, all we needed in terms of corrections and additional context from yesterday's puzzle and that was left in comments. So thanks as always, if you have left a comment, but thanks if you've made it this far in the video. And I will be back tomorrow, of course, for the highly themed Thursday edition of The Crossroads. So do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.